Welcome back, design students. Just wanted to call your attention to Pure Ref here. It's freeware, um, and you can make a donation when you download it. You don't have to. It can be free if you want it to be, or you can make a donation. And when you download it, you are then allowed to distribute it within your organization. So my organization is our classroom, and I have made a donation and downloaded it. So if you want to use this software within the classroom, simply ask, and I will install it on your computer. I'm trying to get it installed on all the computers in the classroom, and that will happen eventually. But it's a very useful tool, and I highly recommend using it. So let's get started. So I have uh, Pure Ref here open. I really don't need it to be open right now because I'm going to use this image plane that I have. So I'm going to right click and uncheck always on top so that it's not always on top. So I'm going to, um, I moved my image plane back away from the cylinder a little bit from the center because I want to be able to model in the center. So I moved my, I unfroze it and moved it back to, moved it back a little bit. But now it's behind the grid. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the grid off because I really don't need it for this. So the grid can be turned off right here in your panel toolbar right here. And then to make this a little more easy to work with, I'm going to turn on uh, wireframe on shaded so that when I make this transparent using x-ray, I can still see my edges. Now, before we get started, I want to be very clear here that you do not have to make this lightsaber. You do not have to make any particular lightsaber. You can make a lightsaber based on your own design if you would like. In fact, I would encourage you to do that if you want to. But um, I want to do it this way so I can demonstrate to everyone how to use reference images. Now, you can also make different pieces of different lightsabers and assemble them together to something new. That's called kit bashing. And that's how they made the original props. They kit bashed a bunch of random junk. And before 3D modeling was a thing, that's how they made a lot of different uh, models for films, and like spaceships and ray guns and other kinds of props like that. So let's get started. I think I'm going to start with this end piece right here. And I'm going to make it in separate pieces. I'm not going to try to make it all out of one cylinder. Uh, I think it would be useful to make it in a modular fashion based on what I was just talking about with, uh, you know, the possibility of kit bashing something new. So I'm going to start by switching to vertex mode. I'm going to grab all these end vertices, get my move tool and move it down because I'm just going to make this end piece right here. And then I'm going to switch to x-ray mode and that can be found right here in your panel toolbar. And I'm going to zoom in some. And then I'm going to switch to object mode and scale this up in all directions. But notice when I switch to the scale tool, my scale tool is not there. The reason it's not there is because it's over here. Now, this is a thing you're going to have to deal with at some point in your 3D modeling life, no matter what program you're working with. When you create an object, the pivot point is always in the center of that object. And this object was this long when we originally created it. Remember, we created it and then we changed its length and its settings over here. Now, what happened was we grabbed the vertices on the end and moved them way over here to shorten it. Well, the pivot point is going to stay in its original position when you do that. When you start modeling in the subdiv level, the pivot point stays where it was originally. So occasionally, and in fact quite often, you're going to have to recenter the pivot. So to do that, in Maya, you select the object and you go to Modify Center Pivot. Now we can do what we were going to do. And we're going to have to do that a lot because the pivot point is going to move around whenever we're modeling this thing in the subdivision level, which is what we're going to do. All right, so back to the subject here. So I'm in the uh, side view, and I'm going to get right in the center here of my scale tool. So I'm scaling it up in all directions, and I'm going to scale it up until it's that diameter, and then I'm going to scale it back so it's the right length. And now I'm going to check my PureRef image collage. I'm going to use Command Tab to switch to PureRef to bring it back up so I can look at my images because I disabled always on top. And I'm going to look at the um, plans here to count how many of these things it has. It has one, two, three, four, five, six. 
So if I'm going to evenly space this around the cylinder, I need some multiple of six. So let's see how many sides our cylinder has. I'm going to click its uh, inputs in the channel box. And you can clearly see that we have 20. We need 24, which would be a multiple of six. Now, look what happened when I changed it. My object flipped out. Now, there's a reason for that. And the reason has to do with the way Maya works and a lot of these other um, 3D modeling program. Whenever you modify something in the subdivision level, you can't go back to the beginning after you've done that and change the original settings. It just won't work. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to create a new cylinder. And I know it seems dumb for me to do it that way, but the reason I did it that way was to demonstrate that to you. Now, I know that I need a multiple of six, so I'm going to go ahead and change it here. So now I've got that. And now I can scale it up. And now I can use subdivision mode because I've already set my sides to get it exactly like I want it. Okay, now I need an edge loop here and an edge loop here to define this piece of it. So what I'm going to do is go to Mesh Tools and get Insert Edge Loop. But I'm going to bring up the options to make sure that everything is set like I want it. I'm just going to reset the tool because I just need the basic settings. And I'm going to click and put an edge loop here. And I'm going to click and put an edge loop there. And then I'm going to switch to Perspective View. I'm going to switch to face mode and I'm going to grab, um, oops, I still had my insert edge loop tool active. I'm going to get my select tool and I'm going to select two faces holding down shift. And then I'm going to skip two and select two more. And I'm just going to continue to do that around the object. Now notice how my camera is not rotating around the object. So I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to make it easier for me to do that. That resets the camera pivot to the selected object. And that should do it. Okay, now we need to extrude these, so I'm going to switch back to the front view. So then I'm going to shift, right click, and get the extrude face tool. So then I'm going to adjust the thickness to make sure that these things are about the right height. And then I'm going to scale them in using the extrude tool scale function. And then I'm going to scale them in this direction as well because I think they taper in a little bit that way as well. Let's take a look at that and see how it looks in the perspective view. And I think that's what we need to do. We'll take a look at the pure ref image here and see if they do scale in that way. They do, but not much. And then I'm going to select the move tool to accept my extrusions. Now there's one more part of this that I need to do. It's this little end knob. It looks like there's a little knob on the end. So I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to switch to my um, perspective view. And I'm going to grab all of these and rotate around and make sure that I didn't accidentally select anything I didn't mean to. I'm going to get the scale tool and scale in in all axes while holding down shift. And then I'm going to get my move tool, hold down shift and pull that out and then scale it down a little bit like so. Then I'm going to switch back to the front view or the side view with my move tool with those faces still selected and pull that down like so. And so there we have our first piece. All right when we come back we'll do the next section and it should go a lot quicker and I'll see you then.